Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and I'm going to uh, work today on the general maintenance of a Daiwa 47H C-Line Level Wine Reel. Uh, some of you may have viewed my earlier video where I gave hints and, and tips on purchasing a reel that's used, and in that case, uh, this was the example in that video. I bought this at a flea market. It's in very good condition from what I can tell. Turns easily. The level wine functions well. Cosmetically, there's a little bit of um, uh, crud and corrosion and the like on the metal, but not terribly. More like a tarnish. And it is missing its identification badge, which is not uncommon for these Daiwa reels. The Daiwa reels were made in Japan. This one's probably 10 or 15 years old. It's, it's in good condition. It's a workhorse um, if you're doing uh, saltwater fishing or fishing big game. It's got some nice capacity behind it and it's very strong. It's similar to the Daiwa Sea Line 50H, uh, but the 50H does not have the, um, the level wine feature. And also, as we'll see on the bridge and the internals, uh, the mounting of the handle and the way that the bridge goes together is a little bit different. Uh, they don't share many parts. But let's get started. I'll show you how to take the reel apart, how to inspect for uh, broken parts, make sure everything is working, lubricate it as appropriate, and uh, reassemble it. So those of you that watch me know that I like to wear a glove um, on the, the portion of uh, my hand that may get dirty from uh, the real grease that's inside. I also uh, use a parts tray to keep track of all my smart, small parts that I take off the reel. Uh, in this case, it's the bottom of a milk jug, uh, but uh, any of the parts tray will do. To get started, the first thing I like to do is take the side plate off. That's on this reel, it's held together by three Phillips head screws. Sometimes you'll see a different screw in these reels. It's um, one that uh, you can work out with your hands, and it's a slotted screw. In this case, uh, these reels, uh, this reel has Phillips head screws. Okay, that, that takes the, the three off, and as you notice, I'm putting them in that parts bucket there. Uh, uh, the, the inside of the reel looks nice in this case. It's very clean, uh, which is kind of uh, uh, nice to see. All right, so spool comes out. Look on the uh, the bearing side of it. This is a two bearing reel. This is the bearing plate side, not the drive side. Um, I'm just putting a little lube on that. Um, first thing I test for is the uh, level wind feature. There's a plastic cog wheel in there. I make sure that it has all the teeth. So that's what I'm checking for right now. I'm also making sure that it meshes easily with the brass uh, drive teeth uh, gear. Uh, on the other side, that's the case. This one has got lube on it already. Uh, if you wanted to lube the, the reel, I simply suggest that you put a little bit of uh, reel grease right where the, uh, the brass gear and the other one meshes and it'll work its way over time. From a grease perspective, I use a pen uh, reel grease. Um, any manufacturer's reel grease will do, but that's specifically for pen. I work on a lot of pens and uh, that seems to, to hold up well. I also use a real oil. Uh, in this case, I use Real X. You can use another uh, manufacturer's uh, uh, oil as well as some uh, super uh, machine oil or three in one oil. So use the Real X on the bearing and just put a little bit in there. Uh, you don't need to over lube these reels. Uh, I'm going to put the spool back in for now and uh, set it aside. Uh, later, I will uh, lube this, the pole assembly and the worm gear as well. But for now, I'm just going to put those aside, and we'll get over to the business end of this to show you how to take this apart, inspect the drags, and uh, do the surface there. So the first thing you want to do is take that nut cap off, a little protective cap. It kind of looks like uh, those that you'll find on a, uh, a Abu Garcia ambassador reel for example so it's a little plastic cap with a screw that screw connects into the, the hole here uh, next thing up here is there's an e-clamp that sits in a little ridge uh, some folks have a little pliers that takes that off I don't so I simply uh, hold one side of the e-clamp and pry it 
with the screwdriver until I can work it work it free. And there you go, that's free now. That's the E clamp. So I'm taking pieces and parts out as you notice. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with these reels. If you're not, one of the suggestions I make is to take a camera, whether it's your cell phone or a regular camera, and take pictures along the way so that you can uh, see the sequence that those pieces were taken off and, uh, and put them back together. So in this case, there's, there's two pieces here. Uh, there's the nut that I took off, but riding on top of that nut is the washer that goes underneath the E-clip. So I'll put those in my parts bucket as well. That takes the handle off. Underneath the handle there's a, uh, a, a tension clip. And underneath the tension clip is the star drag, which you take off by reversing. everything else. Okay, so now we're down to four bridge mounting screws on the plates. Those come through here. Those are Phillips head screws. Uh, they have a full th uh, slot through, so you could actually use a flat bladed screwdriver if you're, if that's your preference on this one. Uh, I happen to use the Phillips head. Either way, they will work. As you notice, I'm now holding that with my glove. There's no boing factor in this reel. By boing, I mean jack-in-the-box effect. There's no crazy springs and they're going to fly out all over the place. There is one spring that does um, connect uh, to a dog, which may or may not fly off, but uh, I'll show you how to where that's from and how to reassemble that uh, on the other side. Okay, so this is off. You'll notice on the back end of the plate that the reel is very clean as well. Uh, this is your um, your free spool assembly, so I like to trip that to make sure it's working and that the, the screw is in place. I've left these two screws in for a moment. There's springs that sit in recesses. I'm going to take those screws out now. Uh, very similar to the way a pen reel has that little recess for those uh, uh, guide springs. Okay, so that's off to the side. This is clean. Next out is a collar and the spool gear. I'm just going to look at that and set that aside. And then working backwards to forwards, this is the connecting plate between the free spool lever and the, uh, the spool gear. Okay, so those pieces are here. I'm going to take the screws and put those in my parts bucket. This is your dog spring and your dog. As I mentioned, uh, you want to keep track of those. I'm going to put the, uh, the collar assembly, just leave that on the side because we'll go back shortly. Okay, next up is to take the main gear assembly off. So you have a ferrule, you have two tensioning washers, and then you have the, the drag assembly uh, drags. So we're going to pull those off. In this case, because I took that um, E-clip off, this pinion gear came off, if you ever had to replace that. Uh, this one's in good shape. It doesn't need to be replaced, so I'm going to go put that back on the, uh, the shaft. Okay, so we have a ferrule and the two tensioning washers, and then we're into the drags. The drags are a seven drag set. So you have a metal clip, fabric drag, these are well lubricated. They're not going to be requiring lube. But in the event that they did, uh, I'll show you how we go about uh, moving them. All right. And then the last, the last drag. So you have one, two, three, four, five, and then this is the sixth one here, and it's in. You'll notice there's a metal collar here that that sits in. So I don't like to take that out unless it needs to be replaced. Uh, if you take it out, you actually have to pry it out. You're noticing I'm using a pin, but uh, you actually have to pry that out and destroy that. In this case, these drags are all in good shape, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Uh, however, know that if you do need to replace that, that's the way to do that. I also mentioned that uh, it appears that these drags are flexible and have plenty of lube. If you needed drag lube, I recommend uh, using one specifically for that purpose. 
in this case this is a Cal's Universal Reels dry grease uh, a little dab will do you uh, don't over lube it tends to be a problem that I find in reels is people put too much lubrication in there but in this case uh, these are these are well lubed I can feel it on me and it's got the right amount so I'm gonna let it go with that okay reassembly main gear drag on, sits inside the collar metal washer just reversing the process drag washer Eared is always in the center, and that fits in the two slots that are in the the uh, main gear. Make sure that they're seated and, uh, and, and not askew. Last of the fabric washers, last of the metal washers, tensioning spring. Now sometimes these, these are uh, they're bowed. So, so depending on the type of pressure you need, you can either reverse them, have the, uh, the bows opposite each other or with each other, uh, depending on how, um, how much you need in terms of tension or play. I believe the recommendation is that uh, they go opposite each other. Okay, and then the ferrule. So we're back reassembling it the way that this uh, started. And now we're going to reassemble the drive side plate. So we have the two springs we have the collar and the, the spool gear this one I'm going to put a little lubrication on uh, and again little is the operative word here uh, I find that the number one reason a reel fails is because there's a lack of lubrication the number two reason is there's too much lubrication and it either impedes the operation or it just collects a lot of uh, dirt and grime and, and winds up grinding the reel okay so the collar sits on the, the springs, you press in with that and you seat the transition piece just like that. Pressing down now you return the assembly like that and then there's two two carriers that that sits on, one on each, uh, each side and then just simply turning it to see that you've got that correct is what you like to do. The ferrule just fell out there, that's not a problem. And now we're going to put that dog, dog assembly in uh, before we, we go any further. So the dog sits on the right hand side of the back plate. I like to start the screw there and then you want to put that dog in. Sometimes the, the even those plier works best. And then push the screw up through the hole in the dog uh, to, to mount that. And then you can tighten that down. If you, uh, if you tighten all your screws up before you put the dog in, um, it becomes problematic. So I just like to do it where I still have a little bit of play in that, uh, that side plate there. Okay, then the other four, kind of working it like you do with a, uh, a car lug nut. opposite, uh, high, low, opposite. There's four of these and again I reach into my part bu parts bucket to do that. Uh, I, I just can't emphasize enough how much that parts tray will save you uh, over time. Okay, this is three out of four. So we've got one more of the bridge plate screws that we'll do. And again, before I go too much further, I always want to make sure that the, uh, the assembly is moving the right way so that nothing's binding. All right, so the last thing we have to do then is put that spring back that, uh, that connects your, your anti-reverse dog. When I do this spring, I like to do the spring from the top because it, it's, uh, it, it sits to the back there and it's a little bit more difficult to, to get on. And then on the bottom of the spring, there's no real easy way to do this, but this is a, uh, a little metal pin. Uh, I seem to find that that, that that tends to work, so I just hook inside the loop.
and with a little bit of play. Oops, not yet. I'm sure you're going to have a lot more dexterity than I do, uh, but uh, if you have some patience, uh, generally you can work it around to it. There we go. All right, so that's how your spring sits, and then again, you just want to turn that to make sure that it's operating properly. Last piece I do on the lubrication on the inside of the reel is to put a little bit of reel grease on the transition piece for the free spool assembly, and I like to put a, a little bit of oil on that, that ball bearing there, and then we're ready to close this reel back up. So um, just simply align your plates, Now we have the three side plate screws that we started with on the Phillips head. Tightening them up. Now don't over tighten these, you'll break the, the chrome ring, but make sure that they're nice and snug. Also don't use Loctite on these reels. So I've seen people use the Loctite on the, uh, the screws as an anti-vibration. Uh, I've seen those screws get frozen as a result. Okay, ferrule goes in, so our drag goes on. Handle tension. Wing goes on. Handle goes on. Handle nut goes on. This handle nut is a 12 millimeter. You found that out when you were taking it off, but if you're wondering what size it is, it's 12 millimeter. Okay, and then, uh, then we have that E-clip that goes into the groove there so that you have that uh, E-clip washer. Then the E-clip. So uh, we pried that out, if you remember, on the start of this. I use a a needle nose just to put enough pressure on to seat the e-clip back into the, the groove. And then we put that cap back on. Simply tighten that down. And we're only left with one more piece to, to lube. I'm just to make sure it runs. Yep, it looks fine. The last piece to lube is that pole assembly on the level wind. And uh, for that, you need a flathead screwdriver. Turn that off. Okay, and that, that's got a lot of lube on it, but just for the purposes of illustration, a, a simple drop of oil will keep that. And I run an oil across the, uh, the worm gear as well. Okay, so we just reassemble that cap. And I was lucky on this one. Again, it was a flea market find, and I used it as an example on how to buy a, uh, a reel. But uh, yeah, now that it's all lubed, I know the internals are working right. I know that uh, cosmetically it's good. If you, there's a little tarnish and, and crud, as I mentioned, if you want to clean that up, you can uh, use some steel wool. Uh, if it's particularly stubborn, you can use a, uh, an automotive chrome polish uh, or another metal cleaner. Uh, this one looks like it'll shine up pretty nice if I uh, spend some time, but uh, I hope that's been helpful to you. Uh, if you have one of these reels, I hope it showed you all the pieces and parts that are in it. Uh, if you don't have one of these reels or considering buying it, uh, kind of look at the other video in terms of what to look out for. But I find that these are workhorses, they're fantastic reels, and I would recommend that uh, you go ahead and get yourself one if you have, have the opportunity and the need. So uh, with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching the video. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And uh, if you want to see some of the other videos uh, in my collection, uh, you can find out ways to repair pen reels and others. Thanks again for watching.